belongs to the risen king. Amen and amen. The scripture reading today is going to be from uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 9 to 18. Uh, This is a prayer by David. After the people rejoiced over the offerings they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord for the building of a temple. David's prayer of praise from verse 10. Then David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly. O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, may you be praised forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours, O Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honor come from you alone, for you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand, and at your discretion people are made great and given strength. O our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you, and we give you only what you first gave us. We are here for only a moment, visitors and strangers in the land as our ancestors were before us. Our days on earth are like a passing shadow, gone as soon without a trace. O Lord our God, even this material we have gathered to build a temple to honor you, holy name, comes from you. It all belongs to you. I know, my God, that you examine our hearts and rejoice when you find integrity there. You know I have done all this with good motives, and I have watched your people offer their gifts willingly and joyously. O Lord, the God of our ancestor Abraham, Isaac and Israel, make your people always want to obey you. See to it that their love for you never changes. Amen. Amen. We honor your word, Lord. O church, just like David, let us rejoice with great joy in doing good unto the Lord. When we give, let us give generously. For it is the grace of God that enables us to give cheerfully. Thank you, Lord. We have no ability within ourselves. We have no strength. We have no power. We have no insight. We have no creativity except that which the Father has given us. So when we praise God, let us praise him in holy awe and reverence because his is the kingdom. His is all power. He is all glory forever and evermore. His greatness is immense and incomprehensible. He is sovereign. He is mighty. He is majestic. He is divine. He is worthy of the highest praise. Hallelujah to the risen King. Bless you, my Lord and my God. That is why, church, that is why we cannot but bow down before him in holy awe. How awesome it is to know that it is the power of God's grace in us that enables us to do his work willingly. Who are we, Lord? For our days, O Lord God Almighty on earth, are but a shadow. Yet everything matters to you. We will acknowledge you, God, in all spiritual things. We will refer every good thought, every good purpose, every good work. We refer it to your grace from whom we receive. Help us always, Lord, in all that we do and in all that we say, to do and say in love. For you search the heart of man and know our inner thoughts and our motives. Oh, my Lord, to you be the glory. We magnify your name even in this moment, Lord God, as we come before you in prayer. We glorify you, my Lord and my Redeemer, for you are God. Worthy are you to be honored. Worthy are you to be glorified. Worthy is your name to be lifted on high, my Lord and my Savior, because there's none other than you, my Lord and my King. We bow down before you, my Lord and my Savior. We call you holy because you are holy. We call you mighty. We call you majestic. We call you awesome. Oh, my Redeemer. 
Redeemer, you are worthy, my Lord and my God. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord because that is who you are. We come today to worship you. We come today to lift your name because there's not another name but the name of Jesus. And when we call out the name Jesus, demons tremble. When we call out Jesus, there is healing. There is healing on the house of Jesus right this moment. There is healing congregation. Receive your healing touch even right now. Proclaim it because by the broken body of Christ Jesus, we are healed. Oh, hallelujah. We are who we are by the grace of God. It is by the grace of God that we are who we are. And we thank you, my Lord and my God, for your mercies abound. Your grace abounds. It touches us, my Lord and my Savior. Your love is so deep. Your love is so high. Your love is so wide. Oh, we cannot even fathom it, my Lord and my God. But we are reigning it even in this moment, my Lord and my God. So I thank you, Lord God, that we stand because you enable us. Because it's not by power or by might. It is by your spirit, my Lord and my God. All praises and honor and glory unto you. Bless your holy name. Bless Bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. For all that worthy. Hallelujah to the risen King. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Bless your name. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for this moment. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your way in the rest of the service, my spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way and manifest among us in the mighty name of Jesus. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, my Lord and my Redeemer. Bless your name. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's always on time, isn't he? In three different occasions, the, 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 the word, the, the, what, what he's trying to share with me, three different occasions was preach on the power of words. Somebody say words. words. Now, how many of you know we talk every day? I don't know how many words there is, but how many know the average words are so many words every single day we say, but are those words, words that, we, that God wants us to be speaking, amen? So I just want to take a good look at the word of God today. I, I want each one of us today to take a good look at our own lives. What kind of self-talk are we saying to ourselves? What kind of thinking are we thinking? Uh, are they negative words or are they positive words? If you were to take a little tape recorder uh, and put it inside your pocket and it tapes 24 hours every day, would you be embarrassed to take that and bring it up here this coming Sunday and play it back to the church? <laughs> Somebody say praise God, amen? So how many know our words are very, very important? When you're driving your car alone, uh, you know, during the day or whatever the case is, you're on your way to work, if you talk, you know, sometimes people talk, you know, in their self-talk, are those words positive words or are those words negative words? Are those words words of complaining all the time and how bad your life is and how better it could be in comparing with other people? Or are those words, Lord, I want to thank you for such a great day today. I thank you that I can come to church today. I thank you, Lord, for waking me up another morning today. I thank you for my good health. I thank you for the clothes on my back. I thank you for the food that you've provided for me to eat. I want to thank you for my future. Thank you for my tomorrow because I don't have to worry about it. You got my back and it's in your hands. Amen. Our words are so very, 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 very important, amen? They reveal who we are. They reveal what we believe. They reveal our character. They reveal everything that is within us. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks is what the Lord said, amen? So let's read John, uh, I'm sorry, James chapter 1, verse 26 in the Word. The Bible says, if you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are just fooling yourself, and your religion is worthless. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we each have a tongue. And Lord, we know that we speak words because of what we believe deep down in our heart, because of how we think about things, how our character is, how our outlook on life is, what our expectations of life is. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would, Lord, uh, be used, Holy Spirit, to change our hearts 
so therefore it would change our tongue. Help us, Lord God, to repent from words of profanity, words of gossip, words of backbiting, words, Lord God, of, of negativity, words of complaining, words of arguing and gossip and just all these different things, Lord God, that are totally not of you. I pray, Lord, that we would learn as a church body, as a church family, that we would never talk against anyone negatively behind their back ever, ever. I pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, we say positive words about people. If we're going to talk about somebody, let it be words of encouragement. Let it be words of saying what an awesome person that is, a great brother or sister, and to pray for one another. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you would just have your perfect way and will. Lord, I bind and rebuke a controlling spirit out of every single person, trying to control people, Lord, with their words, that if you don't do this, I'm going to do this. I pray in Jesus' name against manipulation in the name of Jesus, Lord, which is not of you at all. We were, Lord, on Wednesday night, we're studying the book of Proverbs. It says so much about our words. It's got, given us so much wisdom concerning not saying things that are not of you, Lord God. We know influence is so important in our lives. We know that your word says in Proverbs, those who hang out with the wise are going to become wise. Those who hang out with fools are going to become fools. Help us, Lord God, not to be unequally yoked even in our friendships. Help us not to partake and be influenced to do evil things concerning other people, perhaps that we hang out with or our friends, Lord God. Father, be with us. We just pray that we're, we're pleasers of you, Father God. We don't want to be pleasers of men, but pleasers of you, Lord. And we thank you for that. Touch our spirit concerning this message. Holy Spirit, I pray you convict every single person from pulpit to pew. Anything at all that we're saying that is not of you, convict us, Holy Spirit. We welcome your conviction. We want to repent. We want to stop doing what you don't want us to do. Help us not to sin through what we say. As the psalmist David said in Psalm 16, I have made up my mind not to sin with my words. And Lord, we thank you for that, Father. We praise you and magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. You know, our, our God is such an awesome God, amen. You know, the Bible tells us in James 1 and 26 in the Living uh, Bible, it says this. It says, anyone who says he is a Christian but doesn't control his sharp tongue is just fooling himself and his religion isn't worth much. Amen? Praise the Lord. When, let me ask you a question. What have you been saying lately? What have you been talking about lately to other people? What is your self-talk like, like I said earlier? Our self-talk reveals what we're thinking. Our self-talk reveals our direction in life. Are your expectations of life skewed? Are they not what they should be? Amen? How many you know it's not always going to be a blue sky like it is today with the sun shining? Amen. Our expectations of life need to be realistic. Amen? Is it po are your words positive or are they negative words? Have you been complaining or speaking words of thanksgiving to the Lord? How many know we've got to walk in a heart of thanksgiving? You'll be surprised what your words will do. Your words in which you speak will actually encourage or discourage yourself. Amen? It's interesting in the Word of God, when Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer, He said, when you pray, say. And I'm focusing on that word, say. He didn't say when you pray, think. Am I saying that when we think prayers, God doesn't hear us? Of course not. God hears every thought we have. However, when he said, when you pray, say, how many know he's saying that there's power in words? When you bind and rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus Christ, you can't think and rebuke him. You've got to say, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. He's got to hear you say it, amen? When we say words, we have two ears that hear what we're saying, amen? And it, can, it, and it really helps encourage us, or those negative words discourage us, Amen. Only a few words spoken in anger can destroy a relationship that took years to build. Isn't that the truth? You know, let me tell you something. Let me give you some advice. If you're married and you get into a heated argument with your spouse, don't just, just close your mouth. Don't say words that are going to attack their character. Just zip it. Because you can hurt your spouse tremendously with the words that you're saying, amen, or in any relationship for that matter. What we believe is reflected in what we say. Let me, think, let me say that again. I want, I want, let's chew on this. What we believe is reflected in what we say. 
So if we're saying, I'm never going to make it, I'm just no good, I'm just, I, I, I can't do anything right, I don't know what's going to happen in my life tomorrow, I have no future, you know what you just confessed? You're not walking with God at all. You just said everything that's contrary to the word of God as a Christian. So how many of you know we got to say words like, I'm a child of God. God's got my future in his hands. He gives me a great future and a great hope. He is my Lord and God. I'm on my way to heaven. I, I, he loves me so much. I am his masterpiece. He thinks about me all the time. Oh, praise God. Is never, I'm never alone because God is always with me. His word says he'll never leave nor forsake me. Your words will make or break you. Amen. Praise be to God. A big lie that says, and we learned this many times as kids, especially when we were picked on in school. If you were somebody that was picked on in elementary school or maybe high school or junior high school, you know, you might have, you might have went and said, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Let me tell you something. I've been doing counseling for over 22 years since I've been a pastor. I've sat with literally thousands of people sitting across from me in counsel with them. And let me tell you this, those words, if any of these people have ever been picked on in elementary school, generally have a low self-esteem. But they got to come out of that in the name of Jesus, amen? How many you know words will go through your heart even worse than getting punched in the face many times? Words from a parent that says, you're nothing, you're ugly, you'll never amount to anything, coming from that source of authority will warp that child. Words are so, so important. You know, as parents, we got to tell our kids, I am proud of you. I love you. You're going to make it. You're beautiful. You're handsome. You're intelligent. Amen? You know, words are so very, 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 very important. Amen? Praise God. Speech is the index of the heart. Our speech is the index, truly, of who we are, of what we believe. Amen? James chapter 1, verse 19 tells us, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Why did God give us two ears and one mouth? Did you ever wonder? Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. How many times do we go ahead and say something, and we don't even think about what we're saying before we say it? Then we say it, and it's too late, and it's hurt somebody. You know, Peter, I look at the different people in the Bible, and Peter was one that did that many times. He just spoke before he thought about something. Amen? So how many of you know we've got to really think about what we're going to say to somebody? You know, think about, you know, th think twice, amen, before you say something. How many of you know God wants us to go ahead and say words of encouragement? Words that will really help somebody, amen? What you say determines what another sees. If somebody's telling you a story, you're picturing in your mind the story that they're telling you. If I was telling you, you know, um, the other day, you know, let's say uh, somebody's at the beach, you know, and I went fishing, the water was blue, beautiful day, you know, I mean, you could just hear the birds chirping and so whatever the case is, the seagulls, whatever, and, you know, you're picturing different things in your mind. Words make pictures, amen? Praise God. So we have to know and understand that words are so very, very, very important. Advertisers on television, if you ever see their certain commercials, they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in communication with other experts that say, how is this product going to sell? What words are going to be impressive to sell this product? For example, the word free is a word that generally attracts people. Amen? This is free. Wow, it's free? I like free. Amen. What is free? Praise God. Or I'm the way, you know, like uh, Verizon lately, they're trying to, of course, they're trying to come against, uh, you know, um, Xfinity, uh, Comcast. And so they're saying now in their, in their commercial advertisements, you know, we want you to switch and we're going to make it real easy. Yes, you have a contract with Comcast. We understand that. But we're going to give you up to $500 back to break that contract because that's the fee they're going to charge you. That's how badly we want your business. Amen. And so you think about all these advertisements going on and one comp competitor saying we're better than the other, et cetera, et cetera. Amen. They spend a lot of time in those little tiny 15 to second to 30 second commercials. They want to know the exact words to say. They want to know how to say it. They want to position the lighting just right in that advertisement, in that commercial. They want to get a message across to people in order for them to remember their product and to buy it. I can never, you know, this was years ago. And I'll never forget this. 
Remember Wendy's? They had a campaign, and there's an older woman that came on, Brother John remembers, and she said the words, where's the beef? Where's the beef? She'd open up a McDonald's hamburger, where's the beef? What did that, that impacted me even to this day. When I go to buy a hamburger, I, I'm, when I go to Burger King, I want to know there's a good piece of beef on that Whopper. I don't want to see a bunch of lettuce and a tomato hanging off the sides. I want to see beef hanging off the side. Amen? So her, what, what Wendy's did is they thought about it. They, they, they thought, and they go, okay, we're going to, our beef is much bigger. Even though it's square, it's much bigger than these competitors. How can we get people to switch to us when they, when they want fast food? You know, you got McDonald's, you got Burger King, you got Wendy's, you got all these different people that sell all these burgers. So how can we make them think of Wendy's when they think fast food hamburger, I want one? They don't want them to think of a Big Mac. They don't want people to think of a Whopper. They want people to think of Wendy's, Triple Decker, or whatever, right? So the woman came on with the campaign, Where's the Beef? And people caught on to that, and they said, you know, they're right. You know, how many, you know, then they started thinking, and it gives them questions. McDonald's, how much beef do they put on their patties? Not that much. Bur Burger King, yeah, it, you know, maybe they go ahead and they grill it instead of frying it, but where's the beef? You know, and then people started switching over. Do you follow what I'm saying? They sell an automobile, they're trying to do the same thing. So words are very, very important in order to, to have a message across to different people, amen? But how many you know that what you say determines what another sees? Turn a couple of pages over to James chapter 3, if you would, in the Word of God. I'm reading verses 1 to 12. The Bible tells us in the Word, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged by God with greater strictness. We all make many mistakes, but those who control their tongues can also control themselves in every way. Let me say that again. That's a huge scripture. We all make many mistakes, but those who what? Control their tongues can also control themselves in every other way. We can make a large horse turn around and go wherever, wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a tiny rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot wants it to go, even though the winds are strong. So also, the tongue is a small thing but what enormous damage it can do. A tiny spark can set a great forest on fire, and the tongue is a flame of fire. It is full of wickedness that can ruin your whole life. It can turn the entire course of your life into a blazing flame of destruction, for it is set on fire by hell itself. Verse 7, People can tame all kinds of animals and birds and reptiles and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is an uncontrollable evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it breaks out into curses against those who have been made in the image of God. Now, church, how many know you and I are made in the image of God? So when we talk against each other, we're talking against somebody that's made in the image of God. Amen? Verse 10 says, And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth, Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Can you pick olives from a fig tree or figs from a grapevine? No, you can't draw fresh water from a salty pool. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. You know, spiritual maturity requires a tamed tongue. Amen. If you feel that, you know, I'm, I want to grow in the Lord, I want to be mature in the Lord, one of the indicators of that is, what have you been saying? What have you been saying? Amen. Praise God. Take an inventory of what you're saying. Proper speech is not saying, is not only rather saying the right words at the right time, but it is also controlling your desire to say what you shouldn't. Amen. Now, how many of you know that God has given us self-discipline and self-control? Well, I just had to say that. No, you didn't. You, could, you didn't have to say that. You chose to say that. Amen. So we have to know and understand, amen, that, you know, again, we, we got to control our desire to say what we shouldn't say. If somebody's talking against somebody, whatever the case is, and you're kind of like, you know, you're tempted to go, go ahead with what they're saying or whatever, it, you know, it's good to be mature and not say anything. It's good to say, you know, it, it's good to just go ahead and control our tongue. Now, what are some examples, Pastor Craig, of an untamed tongue? Let me give you a few. Gossiping, 
What is gossip? Gossiping against somebody behind their back and so forth. That's negative. And rumors. How many know rumors are bad? Amen. You ever see that little uh, Veggie Tale uh, cartoon, the um, the rumor weed? I don't know if you remember that or not. It's about a it's about you know a rumor that starts and it's a weed that keeps on growing and as long as that rumor keeps on going with more and more people, the weed keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And next thing you know, that rumor weed is taking over the whole city, wrapping itself around all the buildings and everything. Amen. And so the whole thing is, don't have any rumors going around. Hey, did you hear something? Yeah, I heard this from such and such. And I, they heard that from such and such. Then the rumor gets bigger and bigger. Literally, if we took 10 people and we took them in, in, in a circle, and I told one little tiny story, and I whispered it to the person on, on my left, and then I said, okay, tell the next person what I just said, and then they told the story to them, and then they told the story to the next person. Once that circle got around the whole 10 people, it would be totally different when we read it verbatim what the original story was. It's interesting how sometimes we want to ad lib certain things. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, sometimes when people are fishing, you know, they say, I caught a bass, you know, it was, it was, it was pretty big. And next thing you know, well, when I was fishing, I caught this huge bass. Oh, man. And then next thing you know, the bass was so big, we couldn't carry it home. We had to get a U-Haul. <laughs> so in other words, people tend to ad lib to things. How I many of you know ad libbing is not a good thing either? Just be honest with people how it really is. Yeah, I, I caught a bass. It was about three pounds. It was about this big. And praise be to God for that bass. Amen? Praise God. Whatever. You know, instead of saying, oh, you know, whatever. But, but you know, how many know that, that as Christians, we have to be uh, true in what we say? The Bible, Jesus says, let your yes be yes, let your no be no. We shouldn't have to be people who, well, by my mother's grave, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Or I swear by this, I'm going to be there. How about this? Yeah, I'm going to be there, yes. Leave it at that. Amen? So how many of those Christians are going to be honest? Somebody say honest. Idle talk about the affairs of others. That's another negative talk. Putting others down. Bragging. Bragging, amen? Being manipulative to control someone. That's not a good thing. How I many you know manipulation is not of God, amen? Complaining, lying, use of profanity, you know, using certain words that you shouldn't be using, those four letter words, using the Lord Jesus' name in vain, all kinds of things like that, amen? How I many you know we shouldn't be doing that as, as believers in the Lord, amen? The tongue is small, but it is surely influential and it's powerful. A believer's tongue should not be an instrument of inconsistency. Small and influential, the tongue must be controlled. Somebody say controlled, amen? Turn over, if you would, to Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. Let's see what Jesus says concerning the tongue. Matthew chapter 12, verse 33, in the word of God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says a tree, somebody say a tree. Amen. A tree is identified by its fruits. Make a tree good, and its fruit will be good. Make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. And he's re rebuking the Pharisees. He says in the next verse, verse 34, he says, You brood of snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. A good person produces good words from a good heart, and an evil person produces evil words from an evil heart. And I tell you this, that you must give an account on judgment day of every idle word you speak. The words you say now reflect your fate then. Either you will be justified by them or you will be condemned. How I many you know the, the Bible tells us that, backing up to verse 33, if I have an apple tree in my yard, years ago I had a crab apple tree in my yard. And the reason why I knew it was a crab apple tree is it did what? It produced crab apples. I saw the apples on the tree, and I said, this is a crab apple tree. How did I know that? Because it produces, I saw the apples on the tree. Amen? Let me ask you a question concerning your relationships with other people. When people look at you, what kind of fruit do they see? Amen? In other words, relationally, people are always picking our fruit, if I can use that analogy. Do you like to be around certain people? What kind of people do you like to be around that you get good feelings about? Those are the types of people that are positive. 
Those are the types of people that are, you know, that, that really, they're full of the Holy Spirit. They're speaking the word. They're, you know, encouraging. They're having words of, uh, uh, you know, nice, peaceful words and so forth. Amen? Amen? Have you ever been around somebody that had crab apples, but you know they're a crab apple tree, but I'll tell you what, they were a crab? <laughs> you ever been around somebody that is just so negative all the time, no matter what you say, they're going to put that down and be extremely negative. If you walked up to somebody and said, wow, what a beautiful day it is today. Praise God for such a wonderful day. Yeah, but I heard it's going to rain tomorrow. Wow, isn't it, isn't it great? God is such an awesome God. You know, he's given us a beautiful summer. When winter comes, we're probably going to get a lot of snow and somebody's going to die in the snow and get killed in a car wreck. I remember one person years ago, it's nobody here, nobody you even know, that used to, used to come to, to church years and years and years and years ago. And this person, I always tried to encourage this individual. It was a woman, and she, you know, she'd come to church and say, Wow, praise God, you're ready to worship God? You know, you're lucky I'm even here. Anything and everything I said, it was a retort of negativity. I'll be honest with you. I got to the point where, here she comes, hide. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to be around her. I felt like something just got on top, got on me like, like poison ivy or something when I was around her. I mean, I'm not trying to put her down as an individual. I'm giving you it as an example. Take that spirit and say, I am a child of Almighty God. God has blessed me. Think of all your, the wonderful things that God has given you and I. I'm looking around at this building and I'm like, wow, Lord, you're such an awesome God. He is so awesome. You know, I'm thinking about all different things and so forth, and, and, and God is just, wow, you are so, there's nothing to complain about. Praise God, Amen. God is such an awesome God. we got to say, okay, Lord, I want to have words. I want to be, when I'm around people, I want people to say, whoa, yeah, there's Pastor Craig. Yeah, I like talking to Pastor Craig. I want good fruit to pick. I don't want fruit that is all wormy or fruit that's rotten or fruit that's no good. Amen? How many of you know, praise God, we want, you know, the Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. But don't let your salt lose its flavor. What is that talking about? In other words, be a believer, act like a believer, speak like a believer, think like a believer. Don't, let the, don't get sucked back into the world again, the world's ways and the world's thoughts and the world's attitude and so forth and the negativity and all that. Amen? Say, Lord, let me be real, real salty. Amen? Your little light, let your light shine before men. So when you're talking to somebody, you walk in Walmart, you know, hold the door open for somebody, give them a big smile. You're at the gym, you know, uh, smile at somebody, uh, you know, hi, how are you doing, whatever the case is. In other words, let your light so shine before men. Praise God. You know what I mean? Praise the Lord. You know, God is so good. How many of you know we're a witness in Walmart as well as in Changing Lives Christian Church? It's true. The bank teller, the grocery store clerk, whatever the case is, amen, praise God. The Bible says make a, bad, make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. And he goes on to rebuke them and so forth. And the Bible says in the Word of God in the King James, New King James Version, verse 34, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If I took water and I could, uh, spring water, and I kept on pouring it in this cup, what's going to come out? The abundance. Right? In other words, I'm pouring water in, water's going to come out, spring water. If I was pouring in dirty water, dirty water's going to come out. So truly what's inside this cup is what's going to be revealed with the overflow. So what's in our heart is what's going to be real, revealed with the overflow through the entity of our mouth when we speak it. So the mouth is revealing who we really are. Amen? Do you follow what I'm saying? Amen? Praise God. So take an inventory. What is just this week, today even, after church, what has my self-talk been like lately? What have I been talking about to people? Am I being more positive or negative? Am I speaking the word or am I speaking flesh? What exactly am I saying? Who am I as an individual? Holy Spirit, fill me. Let me receive your fruit, the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the kindness, the goodness, the self-control, all those wonderful things to change my character from within. I mean, only the Holy Spirit can change us. Somebody say, glory to God. But you have to, you have to go ahead and submit to the Holy Spirit in order to allow him to change you, amen? A measure of spiritual maturity is a believer's speech. We must control our thoughts in order for our tongue to behave. Our, you know, how many know the battle mind's in the mind? The battlefield, rather, is in the mind. 
It's in the mind. Whatever we think, our heart, in other words, that's our heart, our mind, our will, our emotions. That's what we say, amen? So we have to say, Lord, I pray that you change my heart, amen? Our minds are like computers, garbage in, garbage out. I heard one time, a long time ago, a Christian telling me, well, I've been walking with the Lord for a long time, you know something, and I can watch any kind of movies, R, with nudity and swearing and whatever, I can take it. No, you can't take it. I don't care if you've been walking with the Lord for 10 million years. If you say you're mature, you wouldn't even be wanting to watch that stuff. Right? We're like sponges. Our minds, you know, inf we're very much influenced, like I said earlier, concerning advertising. Right? You know, you're watching TV and you think of different things, different commercials. Why? Because you receive those, those certain things or whatever the case is. So how many of you know that we're influenced by certain things where we've got to say, Lord, I, I just want to go ahead and, you know, I'm not going to be legalistic about it. I'm not going to write a bunch of list of rules. You can't watch that program. You can't watch that. You can't see that movie. You can't see this one. And then put it on everybody else. You yourself as a Christian, as a mature believer, you say, okay, you know something? I choose not to watch that. I don't care what you say about it, but I know it's not good for me, so I'm not going to watch that. Amen. Period. Why be a people pleaser? Come on, let's go to the movies. It's not that bad. It's only got a little nudity. It's only got a little bit of swearing. Uh, whatever the case is, come on, it's just a little bit. That's where your boundaries have to be as a believer and say, you know something? I choose not to. Amen? Amen? Somebody say glory to God. Amen. Praise God. You know, God is such an awesome God. Amen. What are we watching on TV? Or the computer? What are you watching on your cell phone? Amen. What do we listen to on the radio? You know, you're influenced with that too. How many times have you walked in Walmart? You know, they have background music. And for the next hour or two, you're driving, doing your other errands, and that song is playing in your mind. The last song you heard is playing in your mind. Amen? You know, I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad song, but I'm just saying, it, what, what is it? It's the influence from being there, and all of a sudden your mind is like a tape recorder. It's just taped it, now the play mode is on. And now it's, you're playing it back, amen? So what, what are we listening to on the radio, amen? What kind of music do we listen to? What do we read? What are we feeding ourselves with, amen? What is our regular lifestyle like? Who do we have as friends? Do we have our, Bible, our, Bible, you know, our, our friends in church, and then throughout the course of the week, we, we party with our friends Saturday night, the other group? We kind of like a chameleon. We kind of change colors with our atmosphere, who we're with. Party Saturday night, and then worship God Sunday morning. How I many you know God doesn't want us to be doing that? Amen? Praise God. You know, how are we, um, you know, how, how many of you know church that the Holy, we got to allow the Holy Spirit to fill us with new attitudes, new motives, and then your speech will be cleansed in its source. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 says, Don't use bad language. Say only what is good and helpful to those who are ta to those that you are talking to, and what will give them a blessing. Isn't it good to say, say a good word to somebody to bless them? Amen. Amen. You know, praise God. Thank you for coming to church today, brother. Thank you for coming to church today, sister. Thank you for your ministry. You're such a blessing to the kingdom of God. Amen. You know, I know you're praying about that situation, brother, but I know God's going to come through for you because I'm going to continue to pray for you, amen? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4 says, Dirty stories, foul talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, remind each other of God's goodness and be thankful. Amen? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. God works to change us from the inside out. When the Holy Spirit purifies a heart, he gives self-control so that person will speak words that please God. Proverbs 13 and verse 3 says, Self-control means controlling the tongue. A quick retort can ruin everything. Amen. Somebody say praise God. Turn over if you would to Proverbs chapter 15 in the Word of God. Amen. Proverbs chapter 15 in the Word of God. And I want to read verses 1 through 7. The Bible tells us in the Word of God as you're turning, it says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stir up anger. Let me ask you a question. If somebody is yelling at you about something, what do they generally want you to do in return? Yell back. But if you don't feed what they're looking for, it will shut down the argument. <laughs> somebody say praise the Lord. <laughs> in other words, somebody comes up to you, I can't believe you're this or you're that, you're a jerk. What are they expecting? Well, what are you talking about? Instead of doing that, a soft answer turns away wrath. 
Amen? You want to shut an argument down, husbands and wives, when you're starting to argue with each other? Just, do, just go ahead and give a good word back whenever your spouse starts coming after you. <laughs> they ain't expecting that, amen? It's like the Bible says, like taking extra coals and putting it on somebody's head. I didn't expect kindness after I just told you what I did. <laughs> I expected you to attack me and call me a jerk. <laughs> amen? See what I mean? So in other words, you shut things down that way. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stir up anger. The wise person makes learning a joy. Fools spout only foolishness. The Lord is watching everywhere, keeping his eye on both the evil and the good. Verse 4, gentle words bring life and health. I love that. Gentle words bring what? Life and health. A deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Only a fool despises a parent's discipline. Whoever learns from correction is wise. Where there is treasure in the house of the godly, but the earnings of the wicked bring trouble. Only the wise can give good advice. Fools cannot do so. And I'm skipping down to verse 23, and that says, Everyone enjoys a fitting reply. It is wonderful to say the right thing at the right time. Isn't it? Have you ever gone to somebody, you're going through something, you know, um, and you're just trying to share, you know, brother, sister, can you pray for me? You know, I'm going through this and so forth. And all of a sudden you hear a good word from them, and it's just like medicine. It's just like, oh, praise God. Those words are just, uh, are just very, you know, comforting to my ears. Amen? A good word, the Bible says. A good word. Praise God. It's wonderful to say the right thing at the right time. Praise God. Hallelujah. The tongue, the power of the tongue. Amen, church? Praise God. Proverbs 18, verse 4 says, Wise words are like deep waters. Wisdom flows from the wise like a bubbling brook. Verse 21 of that same chapter goes on to say, The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. I mean, sometimes people like to talk, 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 you know, before they even think, amen? You know, the Bible tells us in the Word of God that it says the tongue can bring death or life. How many of you know church as Christians, we want to bring life to people? We want to speak into people. We, in other words, we want to speak the word into people. We want to go ahead and encourage people, amen? We want to go ahead and say, Lord, help my words to be seasoned, amen, with salt. Help my words to be seasoned, and when I'm sharing them with somebody, Lord, they're words of encouragement, amen? Proverbs 19, 20, get all the advice and instruction you can so you will be wise the rest of your life. Proverbs 21, 23, whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that the truth? If you guard your mouth and your tongue, you're going to keep your soul from troubles. Watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut, and you will stay out of trouble. That's in Proverbs 21, verse 23. Some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. Proverbs 12, and verse 18. See, the Bible's filled with all these things about what we say. Proverbs 16, 24. Kind words are like honey. Sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Proverbs 18, 20. Wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. Flipping over now, fast forwarding to the New Testament, the Gospel of Luke 6 and 45. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. And I mentioned earlier with the power of words to say when you pray, say, amen. You can say words, amen, instead of think them. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Amen. So church, let me ask you a question. What have you been saying again? to yourself lately? What is your self-talk like? Is it words of negativity, putting yourself down? Is it words of saying, I won't make it? Or is it words of saying, I know I'll make it because Jesus is with me? Amen. What kind of words are coming out of your mouth? Are they positive? Are they negative? Are they words of faith or words of fear? Two forces there, faith and fear, amen? Total, total opposites. Let us pray now for the Holy Spirit to change our hearts so then our words will be pleasing to the Lord. Praise God. Let us stand on our feet and pray. Father, we speak words every day. It's inevitable. And so, Lord, the words out of our mouth, I pray that every one of us, Lord, would take an inventory of what we say. 
of what we think. I pray, Lord God, that in our conversations with other people, what, are, what is our emphasis? What are we talking about? Is it negativity? Is it positive, Lord? Is it your word? What are, what are we actually talking about all the time, Lord God? You said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In a dirty heart, dirty words will come out. In a clean heart, clean words will come out. Help us to feed ourselves, Lord God, with your word every single day. I pray, Lord God, that we'd read your word, study your word, meditate upon your word, memorize your word. I pray, Lord God, in Jesus' name, we'd be careful about what we do watch on TV and what movies we do see, Lord God, what music we listen to, who we're hanging out with, who's influencing us, Lord God. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you just have your perfect way and will in our hearts as we will speak your word to others. And Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for those encouraging words. We praise, we magnify your name, Lord God. We pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you convict us for the words that are not of you. And Lord God, we thank you for your conviction at this time. And we magnify your name, Lord. We pray for those who are not in church today. I pray, Lord God, that you'd be with them, Father God. We pray that you would just have your perfect way and will in their hearts and lives. We lift up uh, Sister Kelly, Lord, concerning that, Lord, I pray that she heals very quickly, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We pray for Sister Kay, losing her sister with her grief, Lord. We continually lift up Brother Ernest, Lord, concerning the loss of his mom. We pray, Lord God, that you would just be with every person, Lord, that's going through different situations and trials in life. Encourage us, O oh Lord God, we pray, and we thank you for these things. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and if you like prayer, please come on up. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in and watching our service today. Uh, I am the youth leader here at uh, Changing Lives Christian Church. Uh, I want to share a little bit about my testimony and how I got here. Uh, about 10 years ago, I was called in to helping out in youth ministry. Uh, then, a few years later, uh, I was called in to uh, being a leader as a youth leader. Uh, and since then, um, I've been working with the youth here in uh, Haverhill. Um, but back when God first called me uh, uh, into his kingdom uh, and working for him, um, and this is for children uh, and kids that may be running through uh, problems and going through things. Uh, when he called me uh, to serve him, uh, I couldn't read or write uh, back then. Uh, and if you told me back then that I'd be teaching a group of kids, I would have said it's never going to happen. Uh, but in a short period of time, uh, with his help <clears throat> in reading his word, uh, I was able to read. Uh, and then I took a spiritual uh, gifts test, uh, and it came up as a teacher. Uh, and again, I, I thought it was funny. Um, I never believed it. But as I kept going on and working with the kids and stuff, uh, then I was called as a leader. And then, so, here I am today. Uh, I've gone through a couple of churches, uh, but my heart was set down here in this neighborhood, uh, here at Newcomb Street. Um, so about a year and a half uh, at my other church, I wanted to uh, reach out to this neighborhood. Uh, not sure why yet, uh, but God knows why. So he called me down to here uh, at Changing Lives Christian Church. Um, so we could reach out here. Uh, I've been here three months or so now, um, and the youth group is doubled uh, from what it was uh, at the other church. Uh, and the youth group from that church also followed me down here. Um, and the, all the kids in the group like to call me Uncle Nicky. Uh, so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm going to take it as a good thing. Uh, our vision at Cornerstone Youth Group is, the vision is um, we want to encourage and support kids um, through their, their issues and their problems um, and, and just help them through, show them that we love them. Um, we're, we're a very laid back, easy going youth group and most of my lessons are easy for them to understand. Uh, we talk about life problems, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and usually my lessons don't get finished because the kids like to have discussions, which 
I prefer, um, where they want to talk about things, they bring things up, and I enjoy that because they're thinking and they want to talk about their issues and problems. And what happens in the youth group stays in the youth group. So we're able to help each other. And I want to share some of the classes that we've gone through and some that, that we're going to be coming up. Um, we've done uh, bad influence, uh, forgiveness, uh, hurtful words. Hurtful words was a good class. Uh, what we did with that one is that we, I gave the kids a list of uh, stickets, and I told them to write down things that they were called or things that they may have called other people. Um, anything other than vulgar words. Uh, so we did that, we went through that, and what we did was the kids had their lists, and then they ran around and stuck the list, the names on each other. And then we sat down and had a class on that, which each kid would get up in front of the class and they would put, tell you what it said on the stick it and put it on the board. Well, after each kid was done, what we did was we sat down and I had a list of names that God calls the kids or would call you. And so I asked them what number they wanted and they chose the stick stickets that they wanted, and they were like beautiful, uh, wonderful, um, things like that. Um, <clears throat> and I still have mine here, which I got uh, was chosen. Uh, so that was an excellent, excellent class. And I remember one of the kids when they picked theirs, and I gave it to them. You could just see a load come off of them, like. I can't believe this. This is what God calls me. And, and so things like that we go through. Um, then we got honesty, kindness, uh, parent-teen relationships, uh, peer pressure, salvation is another one that we talk about quite often. Um, that kind of finds its way into a lot of the lessons. Uh, and this summer, actually, we, I believe we're up to seven kids that are going to be baptized which is great. Uh, they've accepted the Lord over the last year. Um, Self-image, uh, teamwork, relationships, judging others was a good one. Um, and some of the classes that are coming up is, uh, and, and these are just from what the kids are talking about. Uh, we got bullying, we got anger, we got violence, we got boldness, we got dating, uh, we got drugs, Loneliness, uh, responsibilities, uh, rejection, sexual purity, and suicide, which is a big one amongst the kids nowadays um, that a lot of the kids talk about. Actually, my younger kids are talking about this stuff now. Um, so these are some of the classes that we're, we're going over. Uh, and again, we explain it in a, in a manner that they can understand nothing over their head um, and, and they just enjoy coming. Uh, we, we usually have an activity uh, beforehand, uh, a game or whatever, and then we calm down, we settle down, and we have our lesson or discussion, whatever they, they uh, feel and they want to do that week. Um, so I just encourage any kids out there that uh, are between the ages of 10 and 16 to come on out. Um, we're, we're very laid back, uh, easy going, and, and we'd love to have you out here uh, to uh, sit down and in, enjoy a Friday night with us. Um, so if you, you can call us uh, for any information. Um, you can go online uh, for uh, Cornerstone um, Youth Group Ministry uh, dot information. Or you can find us also on uh, Facebook, the same name. Or you can even go to the church website, which is info at changinglivesChristianChurch.com. Uh, um, and our websites, the websites are all connected together. So we'd love to see you out. And thank you for tuning in. Hi, I'm Craig Matheson, pastor.
Changing Lives Christian Church here in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Thank you very much for watching us today on television. We air our services here on community television as well as through YouTube and also on our church website. I'd just like to offer you a couple of little booklets that I've written over the past few years. One of the booklets is called, Are You Going to Heaven When You Die? Now these booklets are absolutely free in their postage paid. No obligation at all to you. We just want to get these booklets into your hands, being that you're viewing us here on television to be a blessing to you. Just to say thank you for watching us. The Bible talks about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It talks about inviting Jesus into our lives, into our hearts as our personal Lord and Savior. The Bible says, if you confess that Jesus is your Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So in other words, you invite Jesus into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. That's where the relationship starts. Now sometimes people might say, well, how do I do that? How, how do I go about that? that? This booklet answers those questions. Are you going to heaven when you die? And the second booklet ties right in with your personal relationship with God. And that is, it's entitled, Why Should I Go to Church? A lot of people don't go to church these days. A lot of people don't go to church, but church attendance is so vitally important to the Christian. If you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you need to come to church. You need to praise God in church. You need to give your testimonies in church, the good things that God is doing for you. You need to hear your pastor's message that he's preaching in your local church. It changes your life. You continue to grow and be a disciple um, or a learner in the Word of God. In other words, how do I live my life now that I'm a Christian? Well, when you go to church, you learn that. And also by reading your Bible every day, you learn that as well. So going to church is very, very important, having a home church. And this booklet points that out. Why should I go to church? And all the different Bible verses are in there biblically um, of why we should attend church on a regular basis as Christians. I just want to encourage you, the email address is there on the bottom of the screen. All you can write to 17 Newcomb Street, which is our church address here in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Zip is 01830. Um, or give us a phone call and just leave a, a message on the voicemail with your name and your address, and we'll ship these right out to you. Postage paid, no obligation to you. We just simply want to get these into your hands to be a blessing to you. Thank you very much, and may God bless you. To many miles behind me, to many trials are true, to many tears which flows to remind us there's too much to gain, to lose. I said to many miles behind me, to many trials are true. To many tears that flows to Remind me, there is too much to gain, to lose. Across the hot burning desert, struggling the right road to choose. But somewhere up ahead, there school clear waters and defeat his one word I won't use and I said to you many sunset lies beyond the mountains to many rivers my feet have gone through and to 